right, welcome everybody to the comic panel. I'm Cody. I'm Taylon. I'm Jacob. And I'm Shawenta. And today we're going to be discussing death, the high cost of living, and death, time of your life. Um, both were written by Neil Gaiman, penciled by Chris Bacalo, inked by Mark Buckingham, uh, lettered by Tom Clean, and uh, the coloring for High Cost of Living was done by Steve Olif and Ollie Optics, and the coloring for uh, Time of Your Life was done, let's see here. The coloring was done by Matt Hollingsworth, and he also did the separations. All right, anyway, so these two stories follow the uh, the character Death, um, who exists in the DC universe. Um, she is one of the Endless, and she was spun out of the Sandman series. She is the little sister of Dream. Um, and so basically we start out in, um, the high cost of living about death and she gets every 100 years, she, uh, she becomes human and she lives, uh, one day which I, I, that actually wasn't clear at first to me. I, I don't know what I thought, how long she was going to live, like maybe a whole lifetime or something. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, she just lives one 24-hour period. Um, and she tries to like kind of experience like, you know, all that is human so that she has a better understanding of the human experience and what she takes away from people. Mm -hmm. Um. And so she meets this guy, uh, a New York teenager named Sexton, and he... Bad name. Yeah, bad name. <laughs> I think we can agree. I mean, I don't think he likes it either. <laughs> uh, Furnival. Sexton Furnival. Yeah, his last name's Furnival. Even... I mean, yeah, but you don't, I mean, you don't choose either of your names, but you, like, double don't choose your last name. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... But you could. You also could just change your name. I mean, Fox I don't think Club when you're 16, did. you get to. Well, yeah, that's true. Anyway, though, so um, yeah, basically, Sexton, um, he's thinking about uh, killing himself, um, but not because he's like overly sad or anything like that. He just doesn't see the point. The lame, the lamest. I reason. mean, it's like yeah. it's like the opposite of you can't go on anymore, right? Or mm -hmm. the strong emotion of that. There's just no strong emotion. Pretty much it's like, I don't yeah. have any strong emotion about anything. This sucks. It's like, yeah. I guess I'll die. <laughs> like, no, no. Yeah, very, very boring, honestly. Um, yeah, did not like this kid. Pretty no. much at any point. <laughs> no, yeah, I can agree. Um, but yeah, so he goes out. He goes to a garbage dump. I don't even really remember <clears throat> why he goes there. Um, I don't think it was important, but then he yeah. falls and a refrigerator lands on him and he's stuck mm -hmm. and, and get this, get this, what's going to happen? <laughs> uh, death comes. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. You before missed. Before that. A little bit before. He, he yells for help. Oh, he yells for help. Yeah. So, <laughs> which I just find ironic. I mean, because it's such a teenager thing, right? Like, <laughs> oh, I want to die. Yeah. It's like you get pushed over side of a cliff you're like oh no mm -hmm. i don't want to die yeah. yeah but yeah death comes and basically offers to rescue him which at first he's uh can't say that word but he's uh not very nice he's mean. and yeah he's mean <laughs> and then uh he basically uh, she's all like, all right, all right, I won't save you. And then he's like, no, come back. <laughs> I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I really thought he was just dead then, and they were just going to go through the entire day. At the very end, it's going to be like, you, you've been dead this entire time. You know that? 
<laughs> a refrigerator fell on him. Yeah, I was a little surprised that, like, at least his, like, legs weren't broken or something. Well, it, it tears up his jeans, I guess. Yeah. So, oh, he, he starts bleeding from the head. We can't say he emerged unscathed. Yeah. No. Those it's impenetrable true. Now he jeans. Has to, <laughs> now he has to smell like a New York dump. <laughs> <laughs> Which no one seems to be bothered by. Yeah, yeah, actually, honestly. I think he smelled uh, like that probably always. Encounter, I was going to say, you probably encounter a lot of people who smell like that. <laughs> he's always yeah. going to the dump, I guess. So he's always smelled like that, probably. <laughs> he just, Maybe. He just managed to face plant this time. Anyway, though, there's also this character named Mad Hetty, who is mm -hmm. uh, a British lady. Um, she appears to be, you know, homeless. Uh and she basically, she goes to death and is like, I want you to find my heart. And Matt Hetty is a returning character from Sandman. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Ah. I can't remember exactly where she first appeared. I focused a little bit more on the other human characters that make reoccurring appearances. So I forgot to look up when she first appeared. Ah, it happens. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, yeah, she she first appeared in Sandman, I believe. Um, and so she puts Death on a mission to find her heart, or otherwise she'll maim uh, Sexton. Sexton. Yeah. yeah. And so basically Death is all like, all right, I'll find your heart for you, but also I already have plans. We're supposed to go out and, like, party. So they go out and try to find a party um, that's going to be really fun. But, like, while that's happening, there's a guy who is trying to, like, kidnap Death and get her um, Ankh necklace, uh, which is her symbol of power, um, her sigil, as they call it. Um, while they're on the search for a really cool party, they run into Hazel <coughs> and a group of her friends who are off to see Hazel's girlfriend, Foxglove, um, mm -hmm. at uh, Foxglove's first opening concert, basically, at this bar. Um, where, you know, kind of cool also that they just like, I don't know, I, I wonder when this is written and how laws have changed. I'm like, Sexton didn't get carded as long as he like just bought soda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just, just throwing that out there. I'm like, weird. Times have changed, I feel like. Gotcha. Um, well, this was 94, I believe. Was it? Or at least the introduction to yeah. the Yeah, I think this is, yeah, this is sometime in the 90s, like mm -hmm. 93, 94. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. So anyway, yeah, Hazel's pregnant. Um, and so now we get into, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and run through the... Uh, where characters have appeared in Sandman because like so first there was Judy and Judy was the slightly abusive uh, girlfriend of Foxglove she died in the 24 hour diner at the hands of John D oh, oh. I didn't catch that yeah <laughs> um gotcha. and Wait, then so was it Judy that was the returning character or John D uh or well, Judy dies in that first appearance, but it's the fact that Foxglove is like basically Judy calls Foxglove on the payphone at the diner, mm. um, but she doesn't answer. Her mom answers, and then Judy yells at Foxglove's mom. Was that in the high cost of living? No, okay. no, no, no. That okay. that just the, Judy is just referenced. Gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah, and then later on, uh, also in the Sandman. Uh, there's a character, Rose Walker, does not make an appearance in either of these books. Uh, she moves in an apartment run by a yuppie couple that goes by Barbie and Ken to search for her missing brother. That's in the dollhouse. Uh, Barbie leaves Ken and moves to an apartment in New York uh, with her best friend, Wanda. She is neighbors with Foxglove and her girlfriend, Hazel, as well as Thaisley, who is a witch, and that's in The Game of You. Hazel is a chef who works at a restaurant run by Sylvia Furnival, who's the mother of Sexton, 
who had an encounter or yeah we got there yeah death with death and so that's basically how all of this links up all of these characters i'm gonna need more <laughs> i mean <laughs> go over the that judy again. connection's cool i don't quite understand yeah. the other ones yeah, I mean, that's because we've read on this show uh, Preludes and Nocturnes, but we have not read Dollhouse or Game of You. Wait, Preludes and Nocturnes was death? No, Preludes and Nocturnes was, was just the first Sandman, that, but that's where Judy... Oh, I, I wasn't there for that. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. I, w- I forgot you weren't there for that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciated it, Cody, because <laughs> I've read all those. So it wasn't for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, I was gonna be like, you really forgot all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so going back to the high cost of living, so they meet up with Hazel, and she's pregnant, and they go to see, um, you know, uh, Foxglove's performance. Uh, Although I do like before we move on that there's a. <laughs> There's a part where Sexton's like, man, I don't want to go here. I'm not going to know anybody. It's going to be boring. <laughs> and then immediately meet somebody he knows. Yeah. <laughs> it felt again like a teenager thing. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> it's very funny. This is lame. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, they go to the performance. Fox Glove is actually pretty good at, you know, singing and songwriting. Uh, there happens to be a record label producer guy there that Sexton is sitting next to, and he convinces him to uh, basically sign Foxglove. Um, then uh, they're kind of like milling about the the bar, talking to people, um, and Death slash Dee Dee is the name that she's taken in her human form. Very creative. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think she chose it. Yeah, that was kind of confusing. Like, you know, like the whole like element of her like having a life before like the 24 hours started. If that person. So this is what I assumed is that it was somebody who was already like lived their life. Like it was somebody who was already a human being mm. that she just inhabited. I mean, they but, were like, saying. I guess she died. Uh, they were saying she like. This whole backstory and stuff that this person already has is, I mean, by the, that she has health problems. And, of course, by mm. the end of the day, she's dead. And so mm. death can leave, pretty much. I don't know. So mm. I do think, like, it, it's a very specific circumstances required. And the fact that it happens only, like, once every hundred years. So, like, <laughs> man. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I mean, the only thing I would say is that, like, Dee Dee, like, holds up a picture of what are supposed to be her parents and said they don't exist, and they never did. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the part that was a little bit confusing. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's why I assume, yeah, because at first I was like, oh, so the, you're just making all this up. Like, you just created this out of thin air. But then something about the way that she was like, oh, yeah, like, yes, they technically exist but like not really just came off to me like this was somebody else's life that she took over well she says at one point the universe is doing this to comfort me Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. putting in all these extra things yeah that was something that was in the uh that kind of prelude to this was like it's well death kind of says like i stopped doing my job for a while and Mm. nobody died Mm. And so they had to like come find me and convince me to go back and do my job again. Mm-hmm. And I guess part of that was you get to be a human for a day every hundred years. Oh, Which gotcha. I mean, it seems like you'd want to do that a little more often, but I'm yeah. not one of the endless. So what do I know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, think, think about it this way. When you are, you go on for eternity until everybody else is gone, then... You know, a right. hundred years probably doesn't seem like that much. I mean, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, the only thing I could think of once this issue, like this arc was over, was like, oh man, we can't do this again, can we? <laughs> <laughs> Not for a hundred years. Yeah. Future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, that's going to be uh, the new DC Comics event. Uh, DC Future State 100 <laughs> with death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was going to say, like, do it in 2099, but, like, wait, that's not the wrong yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, death beyond. There we go. Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, I guess we could start going in the past. Ooh, yeah. Actually, Sandman likes to do that a lot. Just uh, uh, DC behind. <laughs> does, it, does it have the same ring to it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Okay. Anyway, though, so... Uh, yeah, basically, Dee Dee uh, slash Death is talking to this guy that um, Sexton knows from school who is, they're, they're kind of wishy-washy about it. Like, you know, like Sexton doesn't know whether he's like a bad person, but like he's heard rumors about how he's a bad person. I yeah. mean, and he just assumes that it is true. It's I mean, those kind school. of rumors don't just like spring up though. It's school yeah. and it's like it's not like rumors like oh I heard he likes to likes to punch people. It's like yeah, he likes to put cats in trash cans and like mm. boil they them alive. They are hyper specific. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. And it I is, think if it... you've seen that happen, that is definitely a different you're going to have a different reaction than like I heard something about this. Yeah, okay, okay. You're a changed point, person once you've seen that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. Basically, though, Dee Dee is like, you know, nah, I want to go with him. He says that there's a much cooler party, like, at this one place. So we're going to go. And... So into, I thought of your second location thing that you said months ago. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but I can kind of glean what you think. I was talking about you're not getting me to a second location is that it yeah yeah (laughs) I don't know if I said that I I don't I don't quite remember the context of why you said but (laughs) it's so dumb it's so dumb he has a cool party he's heard about and Sexton's like this dude is bad (laughs) yeah okay so here's a question for the group do we think that Dee Dee is that naive Yes. To think that there is a party. Or does she know that it's going to bring her to the place where Mad uh, Hattie's heart actually is in the Matryoshka doll eventually? Um, I think that she's that Mm. naive. I think it doesn't matter to her. Yeah. Like, because we even see once, like, all the stuff takes place. Eh, whatever. Just get a new one. Yeah. Yeah, see, like, my interpretation was that. Hey, cool adventure. Let's go. You know, mm. not not necessarily like thinking, man, maybe this guy is not right in the head. I mean, you're asking I mean, the only... if death has like self-preservation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's a good point. I mean, the only reason yeah. I really ask is like when they get to the cab and they are just going around like Sexton asks, like, where are we going? Like, what's the destination? And that's Dee Dee just kind of offhandedly goes like, oh, you know, it'll just work out. You know, we'll end up where yeah. we need to be something along those lines, mm-hmm. yeah. which kind of implies that, like, uh, it will work out either by, like, fate, which does fate apply to the personification of death? Well, or... technically, it, is there a fate in, is, is fate well, an endless? Uh, no. So there's destiny. Destiny, oh, destiny okay. is an endless, but there are the three fates also. Oh, oh no. <laughs> but yeah, it, it either implies fate or destiny, what have you. Mm-hmm. Or gotcha. like she has like some kind of like greater knowledge or like sense that will just, like guide her to the heart now that that's like her goal. I mean, all the time in the world, right? <laughs> no, she has a day. <laughs> Yeah, but then she'll just have another day later. A hundred years right. from now. You're from then. Yeah. Also, so um, is the context of like her being in this um, life for a day, is this the first time she's done that? No. It's no, happened okay. many times before. She actually says that. Wow. So that's, that's weird. That she's <laughs> this excited. Well, I mean... I don't know. This this does go back on what I just said about like a uh, hundred years is like nothing, <laughs> but also like it's been a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, probably. I suppose you're like seventy five. You're like, oh man, I can't wait to go back. <laughs> I haven't had a hot dog in so long. I 
Wait, 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 hold on. A hundred years though. Maybe hot dogs weren't invented. Yeah. No, Jeez. they had hot dogs a hundred years ago. Hundred years Even in from this 1994. Go- okay, maybe not hot dogs, but they were making sausage. Yeah, I which mean, is I basically go- like it's a degree away. You can put that in a bun. <laughs> no, this but it's is still like, different. This is like you visit the supermarket like once, uh, once a year or something. Like there's mm. new stuff all the time. Then everything's mm-hmm. new. Yeah, and people are new. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely but right. But I, I think the... it's a little bit less of like, we keep thinking about time, but I don't think death thinks about time as much as like having to be everywhere at once, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And now you get to be at one You're place. like busy. <laughs> and then like, then you get this one experience where you're not working. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a little bit like her vacation, although it is also part of her job because, you know, it's part of like... It's training. You know. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. training. Um, it's my benefit package. There you go. A little bit. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. So Wait, we're still through the summary yet. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so basically it goes uh the this guy, I can't remember his name, but the bad guy Theo. that like heats kittens uh, up in trash cans. Uh, Theo. Theo. And then Theo. the, the Ermite Theo. is okay. who Theo is yes. working for. Yes. No, the- no. Oh, You're good. <laughs> Theo is working for the Aramite who is uh, blind, or well, not even blind. He doesn't have eyes. He just does not have I mean, sockets. that's a kind of blindness. Well, that's true. <laughs> Fair enough. But, you know, I had, you know I had to differentiate. <laughs> Fair really? Enough. I did not know that an Aramite is a real term oh what does it mean it's a christian hermit or a recluse huh so like a monast a monk like a monastery that's not the word no a monastery is a place like monasticism Uh, i didn't know that that was a word but i get the (laughs) gist now yeah (laughs) um anyway though so yeah he's basically they lock death and um and Sexton in a room and steal Death's sigil. Um, and they're kind of just stuck there. And, uh, oh, yeah. Also, Theo tries to, like, take the sigil first, you know, and, like. Do you just he's... not want to say onk? Oh, no, I, I don't care. It's an onk. It's a sigil, whatever. Same thing. It's <laughs> onk around DD slash Death's uh, around. Yeah, yeah it's. <laughs> Necklace. It's a necklace. I I called it an onk and a necklace at the beginning of the program. I was just okay. I don't know because I I just you know while I was reading this I said I said to myself you know what I don't think the onk gets enough play as like a symbol like Doctor mm. Fate uses it but like you know we should we should see more of it. I see. What other magicians sure, like cool. Doctor Strange? No, you just see more of the onk, not just necessarily with magicians. Oh, okay. Just more onks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, right. you do bring up a good point that's kind of weird that Dr. Fate uses the Ankh when that's the sigil of death, though. Mm. That's, I don't know. I didn't write these comments. Wait, wait, but, it, uh, but he's, no. And I'm, I'm, wait, I'm wait. 100% sure Neil Gaiman did not reach out to the creator of Dr. Fate to ask if he could use the Ankh. No, 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 no. I mean, I doubt that that wouldn't be sensible. It's just kind of like, I don't know, in universe, uh, it's weird. I, I think you kind of answered my question, but I was just wondering, is Dr. Fate one of the three fates? But no, I'm assuming that's no, not. Yeah. Um, That'd be cool. So they're trapped in this room for a while. Theo, oh yeah, got like super punched by the Aramite. <laughs> super punched. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> just yeah. like flattened. I I don't know. That was. Did he punch him? What did he even do? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, the action we, yeah, was a little confusing. Yeah, I don't uh, think it was a magic punch. I think it was just, like, a punch that, like... I mean, technically, like, if you get punched hard enough, like, break your nose, like, you can get, a, like, a, sh- a sliver of bone that, like, goes into your brain and just kills you. Right, so, like, yeah. I guess I did call it a super punch, but I think it was just, like, you know... Basically, Theo was implying that he was, like, kind of this, like, feeble old man, but then he just, like, kind of slams him with a really hard punch. And that's what I meant by super punch. Not that it was, like had any supernatural power behind it, but it was just like, oh, this guy's actually strong. I mean, Theo's the young guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what I meant. The the Aramite did a a strong yes. punch into Theo's face. 
which I, I guess killed him, but like after an indeterminate amount of time. Yeah, the time that it takes for a cigarette to burn all the way down to the filter. Um, which, yeah, without, without don't being know smoked. how much time that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I, I will say, uh, you know, never mind. Yeah, it's We're... something it's something like four hours, though, it seems like. I think it was around midnight when they left the, the bar initially mm -hmm. and like 4 a.m. when they're rescued. Oh, okay. And I will say, like, kind of surprised how, like, unaffected Sexton is having a man die literally in his lap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> really not. Like, <laughs> just like Theo makes a noise and Sexton's like, hey, what was that? And then DD says, oh, yeah, that was a death rattle. You don't have to worry about him anymore. You can stop cradling <laughs> his body now. <laughs> Jeez. Now, see, when you're dealing with somebody who has no feelings... Then it makes sense him be like. Are oh, you yeah. saying Sexton has no feelings, or yes. because Theo's dot? Okay. No, Sexton has no feelings. He just has well, yeah. slight outrage that Dee Dee gets things for free. <laughs> Which yeah. honestly, I am a little upset about. Like all I've heard about <laughs> New York is that, like, oh man, it's a dog eat dog world. Nobody's gonna help you. You gotta, you gotta be fighting every day, and now people are just like handing out free hot dogs mm -hmm. <laughs> and free cab rides. Yeah. It is a little bit uh, magic. I do... Okay, no, we're not there yet. We'll get there. I I understand. I actually... I very much expected you to be frustrated by that, Jake. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is going to upset Jake. <laughs> uh, what, what can I say? Life you know isn't me. fair. <laughs> yeah. I You're sure right, do. It's free. Um, so, yeah, then... Uh, they kind of talk about trying to, like, break out, um, but there's really nothing that they can do to break out or anything. So but, they're told, but yeah. do they really even try, except for Sexton? Uh, I mean, they, I guess, right, right as they're trying, Mad Hetty comes in. Yeah, to as, be fair, Sexton did note there was no handle on the door, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so Mad Hetty and Dee Dee's neighbor. Um, Amelia Robertson, or Robin... Them? Yeah, Miss, Mrs. Robinson, Robinson, as she's yeah. uh, often named. Mm -hmm. uh, they come to their rescue, and honestly, like, Mrs. Robinson, pretty cool also, is just like, there's a dead body here, I'm gonna go report it from a payphone, you guys get home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, Please get out of here also, and don't leave <laughs> fingerprints. <laughs> yeah. Just has the required ingredients for Mad Hetty to do a spell off screen. That just solves the conflict. It wasn't I mean, a all spell, they needed it was, was tea. tea. I mean, I guess, but, but tea it wasn't, tea it, there wasn't any even in like Dee Dee's apartment. She just went down to the fruit market downstairs <laughs> to find breakfast tea. Yeah, her son studied in England and got <laughs> English breakfast tea. <laughs> I'm just saying, a lot of convenient stuff in here. <laughs> Sometimes things are convenient. I think the, Co I think Cody, the magic I spells like are a li little bit convenient at times. Like even in the other story, I'm just like, you just know how to do this, and it was that easy. Yeah, Cody, the way you said, yeah, her son just went to England. I was like, man, you're just accepting what this book tells you. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm just fighting against uh, Jake's oh, okay. criticism. <laughs> More than anything. He gives an explanation. <laughs> does give an explanation yeah so then they go and they they go get breakfast they're confronted by the Aramite uh, and he's like how did you get out yeah and he's also like I have your sigil your ankh your necklace <laughs> thing I have control over you and she's like whatever it's and like alright man if you say it's so it's just a dude <laughs> bothering them at breakfast literally <laughs> yeah yeah, the owner just, like, ushers him outside. It's like, yeah, we don't want you here. He's Not like, I have power over her, over death. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. now please leave the diner. Yeah, yeah like, everybody who's, like, way too, like, I don't know, willing to just, like, be shuffled out by this, like, breakfast uh, restaurant owner. <laughs> he's like, man, you just killed a dude with one punch. And you're just going to be, like, gently escorted out of this diner? It's okay. That dude was horrible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he was a bad guy. I don't feel bad, but like, if your goal is to, you know, shackle death, 
then like maybe you shouldn't be foiled by <laughs> being politely a, made a restaurant to leave. owner yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah i don't know about that like I'll, I'll have to think more about that basically um but yeah they leave the place uh death just buys another onk necklace um and yeah she like basically it's kind of revealed that it's like it's the power of the symbol. It's not really that it has any, uh, like, magical properties. It's the fact that she is death, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, apparently it could just be any Ankh. Yeah. What does the Ankh do anyway? That's my question. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, it's a symbol. It's about what it represents. And that then symbols have power. So, yeah, after they, they buy the Ankh... They talk a little bit about like stuff. Uh, Dee Dee and Sexton go to a fountain, and uh, she gives uh, she gives Sexton her last two pennies, and she falls into the fountain and mm-hmm. dies because it's been twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. Um, I was almost gonna say like, oh, she gave him some uh, seeds, like uh, like Jack. No. <laughs> what do you think the seeds that you got from the personification of death on the day that she has in her hundred years? Like, what would that grow? What do you think? Really cool tree. <laughs> yeah. That would An be there tree. to like a... An <laughs> <ox-shaped> <laughs> tree. <laughs> a tree that grows in <laughs> I was going to say, the tree would be alive for a hundred years and then it'd die. Oh, Then yeah, she yeah. comes back as the tree. <laughs> Rises from the ashes. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I think we skipped over yeah. a little bit where when they were trapped down there in the basement with Theo's dead body and they were like playing with some of the toys and, you know, mm-hmm. Dee Dee was trying to cheer up Sexton like, you know, not everything's bad. Like uh, the little clown toy falling over. But then yeah. they also play with, um, what is it, the Russian doll toy? And yeah. Dee Dee like carries it around for the rest of the issue. And mm-hmm. which turns out to be Mad Hetty's heart. Yeah, or it's it's hidden in the at the deepest level yes. of the Russian doll. Um, now I gotta say, it's a heart necklace, which uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, did you think it's... it was gonna be a be- a beating heart? <laughs> I mean, it's like the Ankh yeah. necklace, right? <laughs> yeah, very similar. I mean, yeah, Mad Hetty is definitely still just a very long living human um uh. but yeah definitely her heart is meaningful in some way i'm actually not really sure how it is and she basically ends it after she gets it back she's all like i'm gonna just hide it somewhere else now <laughs> well it's meaning isn't it she's trying to hide it from death mm-hmm. so i would assume it's something to do with you know death finds it and touches it and then you're dead yeah so that's why yeah. she's lived for so long? Question mark. I, I think yeah, you're you're probably on the right track for sure because huh. I think, basically, she and at the beginning of the story she was all like, yes, it's time for me to die, kind of, and this will be the, my one chance to have death find the heart and, you know, take my life, and then but, death is kind of just all like, I know where it is and I'm not gonna take it. Which, yeah, I guess it means Mad Hetty must have done something really wrong to get this immortality. <laughs> I like that. That's your assumption. Something wrong instead of something getting an allowance of more time. Mm. I mean, yeah, it could be. This could just be Death's version of that guy in Sandman who just chose not to die because dying's for losers. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, that that happened. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's basically a deal that he made with Dream, kind of. Like, Mm. I mean, him and Dream, or, I mean, Dream and Death were together in the human realm, and they heard this guy talking, and they're like, it'd be funny if, like, you know, we just gave him what he wanted. I mean, yeah, he was like, absolute, like, Sigma grind sets, like, the only reason people (laughs) die is because they think they have to die. (laughs) Um, Yeah. It seems to be a common thing in this especially in this arc of like people going sure hope i die soon 
like the ermite at the very end being like, ah, uh, one day I'll die. I do want to call out like one like good writing part where it's like they're at the they're at the concert before they start and like Sexton's, you know, mingling as much as he can. And he meets this like random girl that he decides to like kind of talk about a little bit with his life and he's like, Man, I kinda wanna kill myself. His girl's like, Why? It's just like, Man, I just don't feel about anything. And then she goes through her like she says it's her friend's story about being abused and then trying to kill herself and then being glad she was alive at the end when she uh, ultimately fails to kill herself. Mm. And like, I didn't get it immediately until like I looked at the character and it's like, Oh, she's wearing like past the elbow length gloves. Mm. And her story included when she, when my friend woke up in the hospital with cut with bandages all the way up and down her arm, she was glad to be alive. It's like, Oh, that's it's, it's her. It's not her friend. That's clever. I don't think Sexton's clever enough to get that. No. But I definitely I didn't. also... Okay, so for the most part, I didn't mind Sexton. But man, him just being like, whatever. Like, to that yeah. story, I was like, Sexton, <laughs> oh, be nice for so she, five oh. seconds. <laughs> so she was the person they were talking about at the end when they were yes. like, gloves. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I definitely caught that part. But... I definitely didn't. I was like, I... I haven't read this soon enough. Like, it was too far apart. I, was, <laughs> I thought at, after I read Time of Your Life, I was like, maybe they'll talk about Foxglove? But no. no, no, this makes so much more sense. You know, fair. That is a, that is an okay, like, confusion. Because, mm. yeah, Foxglove, I guess it's a cool performance name. But, like, just to be, like, in casual conversation being called Foxglove, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little odd. I like when they call her Fox. Mm, mm-hmm. that's fine oh, oh. but yeah what, what was it? Sexton did not win points Kavanaugh? oh yeah, yeah she's, what? He's Donna pretty... Kavanaugh yeah Donna Kavanaugh is her Foxglove her... Kavanaugh yeah that's that, uh, yeah she made the right choice <laughs> it's like yeah hi I'm Hazel here's my son uh, uh, Al- Alvy. Alvy. Alvy and then here's my partner Foxglove mm-hmm. it's like it's kind of weird Mm-hmm. Now, okay, now we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, fast forward two years from the high cost of living, and this is death, the time of your life. And, I did not know it was two years. Uh, well, just because Jake said that one was 94 and one oh, was 96. Oh, oh, okay. And I assume that this is going off of real world time. Gotcha. Um, basically, yeah, so Foxglove, you know, she got signed with the record producer that... Uh, Sexton talked to at the party thing that they were at. And then, uh, so, yeah, now Foxglove is a really famous, you know, pop star kind of person. She's away from home a lot, doing interviews, stuff like that. She has a manager named Larry. Um, and she's she's not out to the public yet. Um, out as... As in, she has not come out. Yes. Um, and uh, what else? Yeah, basically, Hazel is at home with her son, Alvy, who she was pregnant with, you know. So maybe it hasn't been two years. I'm not sure that he necessarily looks like a two-year-old in that. But, you know, like a one and a half. He's talking, actually. though. Yeah, okay. Good point. Good point. Like, yeah, it's how he has. Do the big jump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Oh, oh, that scene was really confusing because I did not understand where Alfie was. Alfie was. Yeah, I thought he was like at the top oh. of the stairs, which is still scary, but he was on a balcony. Yeah, <laughs> Hazel's yeah, I, child that... climbed onto a balcony, and then he j- takes a jump off, and nobody's there to catch. But it's that... okay because he doesn't die yet. Yeah, I was sure so, that he. Uh, that died. really hurt to read. When that happened, I was like, ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is not outside the realm of possibility for this book to kill a, not an infant, but a a, chi- a young child. Because they mm-hmm. did kill an infant in the Sandman crossover. So, mm-hmm. yeah, c- could happen. I mean. Mm-hmm. Although this I guess technically they did, but like off screen. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> if you're paying attention to like the prologue, yeah. 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 
true. Yeah. I just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so I was like, huh? I paid attention. I, so, I did not recognize the characters because I feel like maybe the coloring or the style for the prologue was just a little different. So I did not recognize that was Hazel. Yeah. Mm. I, I agree too. Like I kind of did, but I also like, I basically just like, I was like, this doesn't make sense. And then I threw it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, there's n nothing you can associate it with. Cause we also haven't seen the new design of Hazel yet by then. Mm -hmm. So you just, the information is not kept because there's no names or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, also, yeah, so I, I really thought that Alvy was going to die, and it, like, kind of makes sense now that he didn't die, but I'm like, it is weird. <laughs> it's like, huh, that was really, uh... That hurt? Kids yeah. sure are resilient. They can fall from a story. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. mansion. Kids, kids that age, they got, they got soft bones. They'll bounce. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, Larry, the manager, he, uh, is on a plane back to LA or yeah. And I think Foxglove is in New York doing David Letterman. Um, then, uh, he dies on the plane and he basically visits or yeah, he, he visits Foxglove like as a death apparition kind of thing um, in while she's like asleep in her uh, dressing room and says that you, no matter what, you need to listen to Hazel. And she's like, okay, sure, whatever. And then like wakes up. Um, well, she thinks she isn't even asleep then. She like walked into her dressing room and then she mm -hmm. saw him. And so she thought she was talking to the actual him. She goes, yeah, yeah. sure, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like... <laughs> him talking yeah, but later she refers to it as a dream like yeah because because she, she wait like you know basically boris comes in and like you know like kind of shakes her awake and she's sitting in a chair in her dressing room well i mean once she finds out that he's like dead yeah once yeah. when she finds out she, he's dead she understands that it wasn't a dream um yeah, and then uh, basically Hazel calls her as she's leaving the recording of David Letterman and is all like, please just come home, come home right now. We need you right now. Mm -hmm. And and uh, what does she say? What does she say? Um, it's serious. I'll be back in a few weeks now. If you'll excuse me, I have a career to be getting on with. Ugh. Thunk. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I need well, a Roblox. Somebody's, somebody's got to make enough money <laughs> to afford that noise. mansion. Yeah. Yes. I Ugh. mean, I feel like yeah. Actually, that is a good point, Jake. I feel like uh, I would be a little bit more sympathetic to Fox Club if I realized how much debt they were in. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, God. that was a lot of debt, and you. Just, I mean, this whole thing, right? You just get more and more in debt. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, dang, all right, like... <laughs> now, see, I, I wouldn't... I mean, yeah, I, I, that's why I... I, uh, I was basically all like, I would be a little bit more mm -hmm. sympathetic, but I mean, still, it was not, not a right way to treat your partner um, when they're, like, you know, basically begging you to come home because it's mm -hmm. really, really important. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, then it's revealed that like, you know, death is there and she's all like, oh, that, you know, I uh, really wish that she would have come. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll try to like speed through the summary a little bit more, but and we can talk about the details as we're like getting into it more. But um, basically, so... Foxglove gets the news... Um, that Larry died. She realizes that she should have listened to Hazel and come home. And meanwhile, uh, I'm forgetting. Hazel is uh, talking to death, and they're definitely in a not uh, not the real world kind of it's a little dream place. world. They're a little through. dream world. Yeah. And Hazel's kind of talking about her relationship to Foxglove and stuff like that. Meanwhile, in the real world, um, 
Oh yeah, also Foxglove is with uh her bodyguard Boris and her uh arranged basically date. arranged date beard. Um which what? arranged date beard? Beard, yeah, it's the term for like oh. basically uh when you're gay and somebody sets you up on a date so that people don't think that you might be gay because you don't oh. have a boyfriend or girlfriend. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and what's his name though? Vito. 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 The Godfather. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I you're, almost got you're falling into the theme that hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a running bit that Foxlove just can't remember the mm-hmm. name. <laughs> almost got named Don Corleone. All right. So yeah, and then um, so they basically Vito says that he can get his brother to get. Uh, another guy to charter a plane to LA from New York. It's going to cost a lot of money, but Fox goes like, this is really, really important. Um, Fox Glove keeps having these dreams with like butterflies in them. And I'm not sure if I really get the significance yet. But we'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, I was going to say, like, the whole thing starts out with Fox Glove's dream about flying and not mm-hmm. being sure wh- which way is up anymore. Because stardom. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just because apparently Foxglove attracts butterflies. <laughs> I mean, like Foxglove, oh, oh, Fox oh, okay. the actual flower, oh, okay, gotcha. attracts butterflies. Anyway, summer. Gotcha. Ah. Although I do want to point out, kind of weird that like the two main characters in this are both named after plants. Hazel and uh, Foxglove. They just... Huh. It's just... Uh, Hazel, Weird choice. Hazel's a, the word for the color brown, too. It's not necessarily... Wait, brown or gray? Definitely not gray. What? It's a... Regar- oh, my God. <laughs> Regardless, I did look it up. You and your hazel, hazel eyes. Is a, it's a plant. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um. So, yeah, they get to L.A. They get to Hazel in Foxglove's house. Um... Hazel and Alvi are not there. Um, and basically, Foxglove gets the idea that they need to do this magic ceremony to um, basically get to the place that um, that Hazel and Alvi are because she is basically thinking she, they aren't anywhere on Earth. Basically. Mm. All right. So, Cody, let me ask you this, because you are the defender of this book in my eyes. So, okay. like, I understand, like, the the scenery change is good because it allows, like, you know, for for new art, basically. You don't, you don't have to be, like, you know, in this house. But, like, from a story perspective, why can't they just be there? Um, Because if, if for some reason Foxglove didn't, like, you know, she was just all, like... All right, Larry's dead, and I did have that weird dream about him saying that I need to listen to Hazel. If she was just like, whatever, though, you know, it's going to be fine. I don't, you know, like, even though I've had experiences with weird magic stuff, this isn't one of those experiences. If that, like, happened, then basically it would just be all like, death would be like, all right, are you going to give me your baby or are you going to give me you? Um, your plan didn't really work out. How and you I thought. guess, yeah, you're the only one here. So, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I'll I'll accept that. Cool. So you're saying the plot needed it? Uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. For us, for yeah, for us to learn, like what what's the deal? Yeah, it kind of had to happen. A plot propeller. <laughs> I some, guess some call that a plot device. <laughs> <They're one. laughs> Just think of the propeller hats now. <laughs> yeah, that was essentially yeah. Ugh. I mean, technically, a, a propeller is a type of device. So I mean, it's, Boom. yeah, fair. Boom. Let's get through the summary <laughs> Just, you know. before we start pulling it yeah. apart. Oh man, where? Is... <laughs> so yeah, Hazel or. Foxglove remembers uh, doing a ceremony with, um, you know, this was when they lived in their New York apartment with uh, uh, Thaisley and Wanda and Barbie. And 
they basically, you know, collected their blood and concentrated, and they were able to get into the dreaming, which is uh, uh, Morpheus's realm. It's just that easy, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it helped that, like, you know, Thaisley was a witch and stuff. When did Sandman come up? Uh, or at least when that happened. When that happened? Um, probably, I think it was actually before the high cost of living. So it would have been, like, either 93 or also 94. Gotcha. Okay. I think, because I don't think that Hazel was pregnant yet. And and who is Morpheus? Morpheus's dream, the uh, death's uh, brother, oh, okay. and also known as the Sandman. Multiple names. Gotcha. Wait, death's brother. Oh, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> again that you didn't read that. And I'm... yeah, you didn't read it for the show. But you have just have you have you tail on just never read Sandman? I've never read Sandman. No. Oh, huh, all right. I mean, I could have guessed. Well, based then on, like, we have an episode for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you um, just have to listen to the comic panel. That's true. <laughs> I I was just trying to make a connection in my head. I was like, I wonder if uh, the Matrix got the name from Sandman. But that seems like a stretch. No. no. It's also it's just a from... name that means... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've never Greek met a Morpheus. <laughs> Yeah. It's really cool of these media from the 90s to come up with all these cool names. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I guess give credit where credit's due. I mean, I guess, you know, they're not as creative as I thought. <laughs> they popularized it more. So. I guess, yeah, you can just thank the ancient Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything was old by the time the ancient Greeks came up with everything. At least that's what Western culture says. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, they do this blood ceremony. It's not really working, though. Um, and then uh, Foxglove realizes that uh, she needs to use the blood and draw the symbol of death, the Ankh. And then so they make it to the foothills of the Dark Land. Um, and they ride in a little umbrella boat uh, on a sea of blood. Um, and they get to Hazel and Death, where they're, they're at. Um, yeah, H Hazel kind of tells the story about, like, you know, a very special memory she had with, uh, Foxglove, uh, where, like, basically it was like, it felt like we were, like, really in love, but later on I asked if, you know, she remembered that memory, and Foxglove didn't remember it at all. Oof! Yeah. <laughs> um, and then she also admits that, or H Hazel admits that she really loves death, but she wants to keep that a secret. With, which makes, no, I, I just, I don't know what she means. <laughs> like, yeah, it's weird, like, because she does say, like, she has, she had a crush on... D, D, D. yeah, from what she remembers, but like it's weird to like move that like weird like crush and like a kind of obsession, but like can never meet them again. You don't know that, but we know that as mm -hmm. the readers, so, like it's fine, but it's weird to like translate that into like love, yeah, like you don't know me, <laughs> yeah, like, like is that what she meant, or did she mean like I just like like how people say I love death or I love. This inanimate object. Or, like, yeah, the concept, or, like, you love that it is a person that you can talk to. Yeah, like, it, I'm just so confused about that. Maybe it's supposed to be broad, but if it's supposed to be broad, it's a little too broad. Or, yeah. or, or, I'm just <laughs> overthinking it, and she literally means, I love you. I don't know, like, I, I, she just told Death, like, almost everything that's, like, really important to her at this moment and death mm -hmm. sort of listened and was very nice in a way that it seems like nobody else is able to at the time like she can't really tell anybody else this because she's trying to keep it a secret but also the one person she'd probably tell it to like foxglove just wasn't being receptive either mm -hmm. so maybe just yeah. kind of thankful for being listened to kind of i love you 
Oh. oh. I don't know. It's a little stretch. Plus, I mean, like, I guess you're just waiting for your partner to get there. So, you know, what else are you going to do? Profess your love to the an undying concept. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, moving on, basically, um, Foxglove and Boris and Vito get there. And Hazel kind of uh, clears up the story of why they're there, which basically we've kind of said, but uh, Alvi died one night at for an unknown reason, honestly. She's just in the rain. I'm assuming that it was close to after he fell off. The Maybe? The no. Or no. No, no, no. I don't think so either. He didn't die when he fell off the balcony because he had already died back then. That was mm-hmm. months right. ago. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, in the in-between, it's like, <laughs> okay, we made the deal for Alvi to come back, but until you come back, does that mean he's just, like, functionally immortal? Yes. That's what it I... seems like... Or, or okay. at least indestructible. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So then, uh, basically, after this deal has been made, which is, like, you know, spare... Alvi's life, give give him back, and you know, I in a couple of months, me, uh, as in Hazel, uh, Foxglove and Alvi will all come back and meet you, and one of us will take his place, basically. Mm. Um, and so then. They, uh, she, she recounts this to Foxglove when they're in bed together. Um, and this is the night that it happened that the Alvi almost died. Um, but yeah, Foxglove is like, no, nah, yeah, I'm well, ignoring you. Well, <laughs> well like, yeah, really. she's like, yeah, I believe you, except yeah, she yeah, just yeah, totally yeah, sure. doesn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, basically, so like, Hazel is all like, I was hoping that like basically we'd be able to talk about how like we all love each other so much and that so death would be all like, all right, I'll spare all of you. You can all live. And and Fox was like, yeah, so Don't love I, you. Def- <laughs> I, def- <laughs> I definitely cheated on you multiple times and I don't think I love you anymore. Oof. <laughs> and uh, Hazel's like, you're so <laughs> silly, Fox Club. Yeah. But yeah, I you mean, came all the way over here. She what does. Do you mean you don't love she me? does make a point, though, to some extent, where it's like, maybe I, I don't know. Maybe you don't love me in that way, but it, there's definitely something there where it's like, you came all this way. You knew that I was with death. Like I don't know how she figured that out, but <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and then you still were like, yeah, I'll come here. Like even if it's to be like, I don't love you. That's that's still a commitment in some ways. Yeah. Although, to be fair, Vito is also there and does not care about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, he's, this is, he's, he's a Buddhist, so it's against his religion. He's yeah, he's, he's just kind of along for the ride. Yeah, he actually says that multiple times, <laughs> that, that specific line, along for the ride. Um, so, yeah, and so, yeah, basically, that's what, what Hazel says. They kind of deliberate about who's going to go. Uh, Vito like is all like, yeah, I'm a Buddhist, and so I think I'm gonna come back, you know, in some way. But I also know that I don't want to die, so I'm not gonna do it. Nope. Well, he's like, yeah, you know, I believe in reincarnation, but there's something deep, deep down in me that still goes, I still don't want to die and find out. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it's like head knowledge hasn't made it to the heart yet. Yeah. Um. And then, yeah, basically Fox Glove is all like, yeah, I'll go, you know, I'll be the person. I've really messed things up. Um, oh, yeah, I skipped over, but she was uh, outed by one of the people that uh, she, you know, cheated on Hazel with. And so in told She hasn't magazine. been outed yet, but they well, like, yeah. they went, a magazine is like probing her and she's like, I can't deal with this right now anyway. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's go it's find. basically it will happen. Like it's about to happen. Yeah. It's a powder keg. 
Um, so yeah, she's like, my life's all messed up. I'll just die and then save Alvi and, you know, everybody will be okay. Like kind of like the, these are all my problems. I'll just deal with them. I, I think that is like the strongest part that, uh, of an indicator that like, I don't love you guys in some ways to me. Cause it's almost mm-hmm. like I have nothing to live for. She says, and it mm. goes, you're saving like your partner's child and your partner from yeah. death. And you go, eh, nothing to live for. Just let them, them live. Mm. Like, I don't know. Yeah. What a thing to say. Not like, oh, I want to save you guys. The main she- reason is there's nothing to live for. She does say my life is crap. Mm-hmm. That is true. Yeah, major yeah. bed. Um, but then Boris, her bodyguard, comes in and is all like, you know, I've been taking care of you, and like I promised Larry that I would take care of you. And so, it's my job. Yeah, it's my job, which I'm like, man, too committed to the job. <laughs> See, it's one thing to like, you know, your first instinct. Jump in front of a bullet. I get that part. <laughs> However, saying, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna die so you can live. But slowly walking towards the bullet? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Like you had perfect Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's just weird. Mm-hmm. I, um, I do think like throughout the time they're traveling to try to find Hazel and Alvi going back to LA, like Boris seems the most tired of them all. He's like, I'm too old for this, but I'm still coming. But also, I'm too old for this, and you're going crazy, whatever you're talking about, like Foxglove. You you know, I bet it would have helped if he looked old. Like, of him being like, you know what, yeah, my time's up. Well, yeah, I'll, I, I'll get to I mean, that. He wouldn't be much of a bodyguard, though, if it was just that like some fair. old man. <laughs> some yeah. old dude. I mean, no, no, like, no, no. He, he, he's not going to leap in front of that bullet. He looks the oldest out of the, like, group of three, for sure. Which, yeah, mm-hmm. honestly, doesn't seem that old looking. No, 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 no. Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right, some guy comes up, jumps, like, kicks him in the back, and he's like, what the heck? I, I mean, yes, I've seen that video. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> So that, just shows, that shows he doesn't have any situational awareness. He let that man run up and drop kick him. What are you talking he can't about? Be a All right. Arnold Schwarzenegger was at a amateur bodybuilding competition, I believe. And he was like doing some press interview, and then some guy, because humans are inherently kind of bad, decided to get his fifteen minutes of fame by running up and drop kicking. Recently? Uh, a no, couple uh, years like ago. A few, yeah. But it's it's the the video popped back up in a couple feeds fairly but, recently. But what does this have to do with this? No, I'm saying that that's proof that a 70-year-old plus or whatever, you know, can be a bodyguard. Or can be. Yeah, can. Yeah. Okay, I thought you said can. Okay, then, so you're saying old people can be bodyguards. You like, yes. look at this I'm one video you, yes. of this man getting kicked. <laughs> Of one in a million genetic superstar, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The part we didn't see was the next day where he goes, man, my back hurts. Yeah, and like that guy got one drop oh, kick fair. and immediately got swarmed by all of the security guards that Arnold Schwarzenegger keeps at all times. Because <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger needs bodyguards too. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, Boris, kind Did of just... strange... Did you want Arnold Schwarzenegger to, like, explode upon impact? (laughs) (laughs) Like, he's just a human being. What was gonna happen? I guess you were expecting him to, like, fall over? Oh, yeah, he barely moved. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he took it like a champ, even at 70. because he weighs a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Keeping it tight. All right. (laughs) So, yeah, uh, Boris, um, you know, sacrifices himself, Mm -hmm. um, and then they all wake up back in the real world, and Boris is dead. Um, They go to Boris's, Boris and Larry's funeral, Mm -hmm. Um, and then we kind of jump ahead, and, um, you know, basically... Foxglove has the realization that, like, you know, she really thought at that point point in time that like her life was falling apart and that like everything was going to go bad but like it really wasn't that bad and she was able to pay off her debt 
and uh, because she got outed says, that her yeah. sales actually went up mm -hmm. I, I i wouldn't say that she realized that her life wasn't that bad it was just more like i needed to get out of that situation like that was a bad situation things were well, gonna work out this wasn't the end of the world like yeah yeah the, the consequences weren't as bad as i thought they were going to be i think is what i was trying to say gotcha um and so yeah and she really likes you know just living with hazel and you know and alvi and alvi um and then there's an epilogue where like foxglove has grown out her hair all the way yeah she's looking more like a hippie now i was gonna say she went full hippie with it mm -hmm. <laughs> got a butterfly shirt that you know reminiscent of the butterflies that she sees in her dreams mm -hmm. um and yeah basically uh she is now like you know she no longer looks like her performance self so like people are like you know never see her anymore and so like she's kind of become uh this like disappeared cele celebrity where are they now but nobody yeah. really knows um and yeah basically she's she's happy she kind of says like what if like you know they're all just dead and then she's all like doesn't matter <laughs> all right kind of interested in the choice of like buddy holly for like the tabloid like choice because buddy holly was long dead at yeah, this point <laughs> definitely i mean we see like elvis on the front cover of that too well, yeah but uh, it's like is elvis the loch ness monster but it's like <laughs> i guess like the, the greater point is like fox club didn't die she yeah. just like stopped touring <laughs> Right. I mean, but did you also see the other one where it's like Elvis? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Oh, yeah, well, but Elvis, Elvis is Loch also long dead at this point. But it was like, is Elvis the Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> like, yeah, that was it's a just, good headline. It's a weird choice for Buddy Holly, all right? Yeah, I think that the point, though, is that, like, she, she might as well be dead, to the public because nobody sees her anymore. She was able to functionally disappear from the public eye. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. So that took me a while. <laughs> a lot of we, stuff happened in this book. We, did, we didn't really help you. <laughs> um, that took about an hour. Just yeah. get enough time codes now. <laughs> that, that, that was half of our show. Yeah. <laughs> that devoted to the summary. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so what were some things that you liked about the book? Man, I had a list <laughs> in my head. Oh, no. It's not in my head anymore. Okay, so this is, I'll, I'll say some things and probably jog your guys' memories a little bit, is that I, so, I mean... Something that I liked, I guess, or at least I found interesting, maybe this isn't quite an I liked, but it was at least interesting, was that I think that a lot of things in this, like, so because we're, like, dealing with the, like, the concept of death, you know, as, like, you know, she takes on a physical form, it, like, it, but also a lot of these stories I feel like could have happened, like, very, like, metaphorically, you know, because it's like, basically, like, even though they're set to be happening, literally, it's like, you know, with Boris, you know, basically, he has a drink on the, the, the chartered flight, and he wasn't supposed to drink because he has the bad liver. And so it's kind of like this whole like destiny thing, where it was like, oh. he was supposed to die anyway, at that time. He even said that if you catch me drinking, or I guess if it interfered with his job, yeah, to fire him. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't but, say if it interferes with his job. He literally said just if you catch me drinking, fire me. Mm -hmm. Okay, his That's liver was bad. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, it's kind of like this. Like I feel like, uh, and it wasn't just in that instance. It also I felt like happened in the high cost of living, where like. Yeah, this this theme of like, you know, fate and destiny, you know, where it's all like these these things were gonna happen anyway, kind of. Like um Like Alvi was gonna live kind of thing. 
Yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, I mean, I guess, and that's where it like kind of falls apart a little bit because it's like, well, there was like months away, but it was like basically this was the only way that Foxglove and Hazel were going to have this, you know, kind of like confrontation wherein, mm -hmm. you know, they were going to realize that they did still love each other. Mm -hmm. Um and it just happened to surround a lot of death and like, you know, like basically if they like imagine if those characters didn't actually already have like, you know, these like magical experiences in the past, you know, then they like, you know, you could imagine people being all like, oh, man, there was like this time that I really thought that Alvi was dead, you know, mm -hmm. but now I kind of realize that it was like you know, basically, like, this This was all leading to this point, you know, kind of thing. Like, making connections where there aren't really any mm. kind of thing. But I don't know. Like, it, it does, like, there, there is some part of it that's like, yeah, that had to have literally happened. Otherwise, it just wouldn't have worked that way. Mm -hmm. So it's not, like, totally there, but I feel like part of it is this, like, faded to happen kind of theme. Uh, yeah, I can I can see that because like with um, high cost of living, like it is really just like uh, death kind of like re inspiring Sexton to like not kill himself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to like refine the zest for life, I guess. <laughs> Which eh, I don't know how much like one day with a stranger. I mean, I guess a lot happened, but to yeah. be fair, she died in it front wasn't of a him. stranger. It was a very special stranger. <laughs> Well, yeah, but even he's like, I'm not sure I believe what she was mm. actually saying. I, I do still think so, it's a very effective if you die at the end of the day in front of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess whatever point you were making throughout the day, if you die at the end of the day, that point is hammered in. Now they have to listen to you. <laughs> Can't argue anymore. I'm dead. He, he is so nonchalant afterwards. Even if he doesn't think she's death, he's like, yeah, just telling his friend about it. Telling Billy about the girl oh, who yeah. died in the fountain in front of him. I guess, yeah, I was talking about how Sexton was unaffected by one death. I kind of, like, brain dumped that he witnessed two deaths, like, mm -hmm. back to back, and was unaffected by both, mostly. <laughs> just yeah. like, yeah, they said she had bad health. Hmm. Who would have known? <laughs> Apparently dead the instant she hit the water. Mm-hmm. But well, before. Oh uh, yeah, yeah that's she right. died and thus hit the water. Well, see that that that's what made me think that like the person she inhabited was already dead. Hmm. No. Although I will say I I that scene in particular I do like. There's like a there's a panel where she's like standing up like on the fountain and then like we get a close up and she's like wait please no like kind of softly. And then she dies and falls in the fountain. And I do kind of like that because it does uh, kind of imply that Dee Dee and Death are different people. Yeah. Not that they're... Well, not, not even... Not that Death is a person, but, like, they are they are the same, but they are, like, different. They're both there. Sense. Um, I, I do think, like... Because you remember when her aunt gets taken away by the Ermite, um, then she's kind of having trouble remembering she's death. Mm -hmm. She keeps going kind That's of true, in and yeah. out of it where she's like not sure about what's happened recently, not sure that she's death, not sure if this is trouble or not, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. It's like you're not being possessed anymore in some ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes me think of, um, like, Thor and Donald Blake a little bit, where, like, you know, they're not the same, well, they are the same person, but they're also different people, but it's not, like, you know, two separate people, they're, they're the same and not the same at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what a useful you know, analogy. <laughs> that sounds, like, super confusing. <laughs> But when you think about it in terms of, like, what we see with Dee Dee and death, like, I can wrap my mind around it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I knew that it wasn't going to help Shuenta because don't, you don't know yeah. stuff about Thor. <laughs> I, I, 
I feel like I know when this is like I know that this has happened in comics before though like that mm-hmm. this is because that, that is kind of the thing like we're technically possessing the same body two minds but we are also experiencing the same thing only one of us may be allowed to emote or whatever but like you yeah. know or, or sometimes the other way around where it's like I wasn't aware of what was going on while you were in mm-hmm. control of the body so depends Oh, there's an old timey Guardians of the Galaxy team member, like one of the original that are, that's like that. Mm. But I can't remember who it is, so it's kind of I shouldn't have brought it up. Really, <laughs> <laughs> just thinking out loud. Somebody too. shout it out in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right. Yeah, but so yeah, I mean, it's too. It 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 does add to Shawanta's point that it happens in the comics more than, or mm. it happens in superhero comics more. than... Often yeah. than not. I mean, this um, is a superhero comic, isn't it? It is. Uh, tangentially. Can, can you just, I'm yeah. not sure I would. I don't just know. get yeah. locked in a basement with Thor. <laughs> How will we get out? Uh, I mean, I'm inclined to be like, I can... If they have a superhero in there... Oh, oh, oh we forgot about the Batman reference. Oh, you saw the movie poster too. I yeah, was gonna mention yes. it. <laughs> I didn't see the movie poster. <laughs> yeah. You know, All right. So when they're walking out of the movie theater in um, time, time of, of your, your life, life mm-hmm. uh, there is a poster on the on the side of the theater that says Batman again, which I think <laughs> is a, a a joke on Batman Returns. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like, yeah. I thought it was clever. I saw it. it like, ah, I, I see. I see what mm-hmm. you did. That is funny. <laughs> I, no, I I wrote in my notes Batman product placement. <laughs> yeah, it's weird to think of Batman as like a like. How did that movie get made in the DC universe? Who owns the rights to ba- the the oh, IP of Batman? That's that's pretty common. I feel like both in Marvel and and DC, where it's all like, well, we don't know who they are, so we can just make movies about them because they aren't they don't have legal rights, you know, unless they reveal their identity. Free real estate. Look at Spider Man. <laughs> I don't know. The Spider Man thing I always thought was like this is just a bunch of like people making knockoff merchandise. Mm-hmm. So like nobody officially does it, but mm-hmm. like this is a major motion picture. That's a little different. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, yeah. Like that. That even feeds into though. Like the whole like there was a fan theory for a while that like basically the the Michael Keaton. Um, yeah. Batman movies were the real Batman, and then like all of the other ones since then were. Oh yeah, the within... dual... I, I think I hear I've heard this. Yeah. Before now, I will say like, not that I would necessarily be against if this if it wasn't true, but like I'd be like yeah I I if it was true I'd be okay with that. <laughs> and that's not me saying like I don't like those movies. That's just me being like yeah, yeah I'm okay with that. What. Are we discussing so, Batman movies being made in a universe? Yeah. Yes, we are. Wait, what do you mean? All Batman movies are made in a universe. In a universe. <laughs> um, anyway, let's get back to Hyphen. death. <laughs> oh, 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 wait. That's something else. Okay. Yeah, mind. Um, so, yeah. We're just firing on all cylinders today. <laughs> mm-hmm. We are killing it. Yeah. I mean, misfiring. I would call it killing it. <laughs> that's, but, yeah, that's... <laughs> stellar job. Um, uh, we're having the time of our life. <laughs> so, don't like it. Downvoted. <laughs> All right, what, who, did you guys come up with any of the yes. things that you liked? Okay. Yes. Okay, so I really, really like the ending of... It might be the ending of the first issue, or um, the moment when they're stuck in the basement. No, ending of the second issue. That's right. Um, where, like I was mentioned previously, they're kind of like talking about how they can't get out of the the basement, you know, he's probably going to kill us, that dude who stuck them in there, the Ermite. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Hetty trusted us to get the, her heart back. You know, we messed up. Um, and Death kind of talks about, DD slash Death talks about, you should take your mind off it. There's more old magazines here. You know, why don't you read something or play with some of the toys? 
you know, and then she compares their situation to the clown toy where she goes, if you knock him down, he just bounces right up again. Like us, we'll get out of this mess just fine. You know, you'll see. And she pushes Mm -hmm. the clown over and waits for him to bounce back and he just falls over. (laughs) Wait, wait, oh wait, this is a clown. Yeah. Not the Russian nesting doll, right? No, no. No. Two different toys. All right, gotcha. And Cause just I was gonna that, say it, it could be weighted. I mean, just that <laughs> moment of her being like, "Oh," as the clown just falls <laughs> over after she compared it to the fact that they'll get out of this situation fine. Yeah, and just Theo's dead body, and then like <laughs> Sexton being like, "Uh, it's not boding yeah. well." I love that scene. <laughs> it's, it's good. It's yeah. like ironic. It's funny. It also feels poignant. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah, that did work really well. Um oh, so there's another thing I like in like the I think it's in the first issue, but like at the at the end where um Hetty is like threatening Sexton, there's like a weird art change in the last panel after like Hattie says, like, you know, if if you don't do this, I'm gonna cut off his nose and you know I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And like the next panel is just a close up to his face and it's done with like I don't know what term, but it's like thicker lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really liked that one too. Actually, I I saved that panel. Um, that's that's pretty neat. I like that. Yeah. Wait, which page is? It's this one. Oh. oh okay. Um. Yeah, and it like yeah, it kind of like I don't know, emphasizes like he's like, what just happened like uh it's like oh man i'm in a situation i don't want to be in mm-hmm. <laughs> so the reason that looks that way is because that's just a they just zoomed in on the previous panel and blew it back up instead of re-inking it or something with thinner lines oh. so that's why it's thicker yeah they did that a wow. few times it was an interesting choice i don't know normally i think i would be like Oh, that's lazy, but <laughs> I don't know. It felt it felt kind of interesting because those are yeah. supposed to be those are supposed to look look the same. I don't know. It's like a zoom in, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of weird. Do you think like on that zoomed in panel too? He has like a bunch of like little like ink speckles. Like, I mean, not you know. The art is ink speckled. It's not supposed to actually be. But it's like the frowny face. Or well, no, not that. That's more of like <laughs> supposed to be like a a texture on his face. I mean, like the really little speckles. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see the speckles. Um, yeah, I was just wondering. Like, do you think that that was intentional then? Because if I like try to zoom on my phone on the the original unzoomed in panel, you know, I don't really get those those speckles I you know I start to see pixels but of course you know it's like the difference between like the actual drawing and the digital scan so I guess I'm just wondering did they add those speckles in is that supposed to be like freckles on him or like other detail or like was that a printing error um okay like- so I I think that it might be a stylistic choice that they left that there, but typically speckles like that usually are from when you're scanning an ink straight from the paper. And like, mm. I I think that they were probably speckling the paper. So I don't know. Like I think that they cleaned it up for the the bit when it's zoomed out, but when it's zoomed in, maybe they didn't clean it up. Because mm. I'm okay. used to stuff like that being left over when you're like, usually when you're doing pencil scans though, not typically ink scans because. I guess I, cl- like, ink very cleanly is a thing. Mm. Well, I, I try to avoid getting speckles like that. Okay. Because I'm obsessive yeah. about that. But I think, you know, for <laughs> some people, having that is, like, a stylistic choice that they like. And I do think that's the case here. Whether they added it intentionally or they just let it happen is a different thing. Mm. Okay. Because you notice how much, like, very often you look at Sexton's face and he just has a lot of, like, little marks as compared mm-hmm. to other characters. I mean, he is kind of, like, roughed up from the dump and everything. Yeah, but you're right. He does kind of just have, like, a lot of texture on his face. Um, 
in a lot of ways, you know, and, and like the way that they do the shading on his nose, like when there's a shadow, it's like, you know, uh, lot, not, it's not hatching, but you know, it's, it's a line texture for it instead of just like being a flat darkness. Yeah. Makes him look like he has a red nose sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that got a little bit more into, into the, the art, art than, <laughs> than I meant to. But I mean, it's interesting, so mm-hmm. it works. Um, um, the other, I mean, we already mentioned it, but I love the diner scene, of course. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. such a, like, the great evil <laughs> versus, can you, like, leave the restaurant? Like, slowly like, pushing him sir, out. We're making a scene. <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> Please stop monologuing to our customers. <laughs> Yeah. In in general, I like the character Death, you know, I think that she is just like, you know, she's characterized really well. And I really, you know, ev- everything that I, that she says kind of feels very like authentic to who she's supposed to be, I guess. Yeah, as an overall mm. like note, I think most of the characters, even if I don't like them, like how the characters react, it, in this, in this arc... Uh, the high cost of living, right? Mm-hmm. I, uh, most of the characters feel like they are acting as they would want to. Like, mm-hmm. this is just who they are. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I, I'd say it's, to some extent, like, like the dialogue is very good at that. I, in the other issues, the other arc, um, what's it called? Uh, time of your life. Time of your life. That one, I feel like we've talked about it a little bit. It's a little bit less at times, especially the, for the very important plot points, because there is a very important plot we're pummeling towards. And I don't feel like I understand totally why some of the characters just go along with it. Mm-hmm. So I guess that goes back into the thing of Destiny again. Is it just Destiny? And is it okay if we just sweep it under the rug as Destiny? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's Destiny. That's why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. um, I just realized now that I misunderstood the very, very end of the high cost of living. Because um, I basically i didn't realize that like i thought it was a mystery who when when death dies at the end of that i thought it was a mystery who she was talking to mm. but now i understand that she's talking to herself mm-hmm. there is the slightly more flesh colored yes. death who is dd yeah. and then there is the super pale death mm. And they basically, yeah, come together and talk. And then, like, you know, Dee Dee is released. She, mm-hmm. you know, becomes incorporeal. Incom- so, I, oh. so, yeah, now it kind of makes a lot more sense, I guess. Like, you know, their their relationship to each other and stuff like that. Before, I was, like, really, really confused and, and felt like it was really ambiguous because I didn't understand that page. Man, just... yeah, if that was not in color. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Good point. Wait, that's why black so... and white isn't always a great choice. I don't yeah. know, maybe you can indicate the difference a different way? Give him different hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make, make Dee Dee still wear her little hat that she got. Oh, yeah, that'd do it too. <laughs> maybe not have the same, like eye makeup and um, yeah necklace. although that doesn't move me i did like that sexton kept saying like man i'm just stuck with this girl who's wearing this dumb hat who keeps saying <laughs> she's deaf i <laughs> don't like hat. it <laughs> actually that's yeah, actually i will say they do uh, pretty much do what we say uh dd Dee Dee is wearing still the jacket that she had on and a little um happy face button on that jacket while death has just a tank top on. You got a tank top she's always wearing. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. So, they are visually distinct, even outside of color. It's just a bunch of color blocks. It's <laughs> just black. Yeah, you're, you're right. It's all ink. Everybody looks the same <laughs> all the time. It's just ink blots. <laughs> I 
for real though like if it wasn't for the skin tone i would not have like noticed them being different Mm -hmm. because it's just black yeah it's like well i have more black on me than you Mm -hmm. yeah i'll I'll be honest the reason that i didn't notice it until now was because while normally i don't do this i was doing a lot of panel by panel reading and so i was just all like i didn't see them you know do uh, you mean like guided view? Yeah, yeah, a guided okay, yeah. view, panel by panel. I mean, yeah. do you want to get into stuff we didn't like? Yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on. First, Wait. I have one more thing to say. One more thing to say. Um, so like I I did uh, a short like, uh, who who is Tori Amos, and then who's like the character model for for Death? Mm-hmm. So Tori Amos is a apparently singer songwriter. Didn't yes. Know that. Um, but friend and collaborator of Neil Gaiman. Mm-hmm. She referenced in and referenced him in a few of her songs, um, and she wrote the introduction to this book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so or to this collection, I guess is a better way of saying it. And then for death, the model was based off of Cinnamon L. Hadley, which is so, some goth person, maybe model. Oh no, costume designer. Sorry. Mm. But specifically in the goth culture, right? Back, uh, you know, around the time this came out. So yeah, uh huh. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, it is. Okay. I, I, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna think it was funny that how much you're emphasizing the goth part because that made me just think of what if he had like used someone else as a model but just made them super goth. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah with like the paint dropper tool just like and we're just gonna fill it in with black it's gonna really make you wear some thick eyeliner it's like well why did you even use me as a model then mm-hmm. I, I, w- I will say like so there's a um, Salt Lake Tribune article kind of like m- looking back on her cause she, she's dead now mm. so it's kind of like I remember when she passed away everybody was doing the tributes which is oh. nice I was not uh, culturally culturally aware at that time, I guess. I didn't even know <laughs> Sandman at the time, but somehow I still saw this. <laughs> and and there's one picture that they have with Jennifer Russell and Chandra Karen. I don't know who those people are, but um, okay. Cinnamon Headley is in it. And I'm like, ah, I see it. I see. That, that looks very much like death. I can see that. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah, I knew about the influences from Tori Amos, you know, and, like, I read the introduction, but I knew it beforehand, too. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know much about uh, Cinnamon Hadley. Hadley? Mm -hmm. Okay, to make sure I said it right. Um, Yeah, so that's cool. Good good note. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving on to things that we didn't like. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sure you guys are locked and loaded. <laughs> um, Honestly, I thought I'd have more. Because, like, I don't know. Uh, stuff just kind of happens. Mm-hmm. I feel like. And, you know, some people like that. You didn't like Sexton, like right? Didn't like Sexton. Yeah. But, like, yeah, he's just kind of kind of there. And Death's just kind of around. I mean, they need Everybody a fish out of water. Kind of does stuff. Yeah. Mm. A, a P- POV kind of thing. Like stuff just kind of happens, and like even stuff that's like feels like it should be important, like um, time of your life, or it's like, man, this is I should feel bad because this is like a character that we know from these two, kind of from these two stories, and like it's their baby, and we should care about the the choice that has to be made. And I'm just like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I very much agree with you, Jake, because it's like, well, first about Sexton, you know, I I just like. Yeah, he's annoying. He's annoying throughout the entire story, pretty much. And, like, we only get little hints that maybe he went on an arc and he changed, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we're, like, but it's so, so subtle to me, it feels like, where it's just all like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I do know. I know that you, like, have changed, but I didn't get any, I didn't get any catharsis as I... far as that change. Yeah, I think the story in itself, uh, it's does, it's trying to so the whole thing with like reverting our expectations where it's like oh it comes out Mad Hattie and the Ermite aren't like they're not just gonna come at them with knives or whatever 
in some ways. Mm-hmm. It's not this intense battle scene, action, car chase, so forth and so forth. It's almost mundane in some ways. And I think we're supposed to... Uh, I think that's supposed to be the enjoyable part, the fact that in some ways, you know, these things are supposed to be big and scary, you know, as he says at the beginning, Sexton's like, normally you see someone and you know, oh, they're the bad guy, and you see the good person, and you know they're the good person, and that won't change throughout the story. And Mm. I think it's supposed to, in some ways, go be more real to life Mm -hmm. in comparison to that, where it's like, these are just people with their own motivations, uh, there's not a big death ray that's going to be turned yeah. on. <laughs> um, <laughs> and unfortunately, because of that, they're trying to make everything mundane and real to life in some ways. So, yeah, you kind of lose where thing important things are happening. Like, oh, this big revelation was made. Oh, this big change. Which is why um, I didn't mention it, but I did like the the small section where Boris has chosen to, like you know, be the one to be taken by death. And Mm. it's just sort of a rift that opens up between them. And you see Boris and death get farther and farther away. And I I do feel like that was a little bit more strong in showing like a big moment. But at the same time, there's also like, there's so much exposition at times. Just Mm -hmm. the part, that's why I didn't like the second arc. Um, time of your life as much as the high cost of living because oh my god hazel gets to tell their whole life story of her and um foxglove but Mm -hmm. also there's just not really that much uh visuals to go with it because they're wandering through this like dreamscape Mm -hmm. so it's really hard to like remember some of this stuff because you're not seeing it as much yeah so yeah i I, like i said i think there's I don't know how to word it better, but it is they're trying to make it mundane in some ways. Mm-hmm. That's no, supposed I, to be I, the appeal and charm to it, but can also backfire. Yeah, I, ve- I very much uh, think that you're on the right track with that. And like, I think, too, that um, I didn't like time of your life as much as cost of living either. Um, because like, even though I've read the Sandman, like, you know, I kind of went through part of like that in my summary, even, you know, there's so much connection to the Sandman in time of your life that like helps you like helps bridge these little gaps where it's like, well, it should really be able to stand alone, you know, like this Mm -hmm. isn't. You know, it's like you asked, like, is this Sandman? No, no, it's not. It's a spin-off of Sandman. But that means that you should be able to just pick it up and read it, not be all like, oh, I have to go back and read Sandman. Otherwise, just make it issues of Sandman, you know? Mm-hmm. Just make it issues of Sandman so people know that they have to go back and read Sandman. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, the first <laughs> issue is an issue of Sandman in this collection. Well, but that's... Because it starts that's... death. Yeah, That's Star's death. It. Yeah, this if okay if it star if it included issues of, you know, appearances from Hazel and Foxglove, that'd be different. But the fact that you know you might not know who these characters are very well and what their experiences have been, um, and they are already like Shwanta said, kind of overloading us with exposition. It would have been way, way too much to be all like, and this is what we did in New York, you know. And, and really us learning the blood <laughs> sacrifice or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. I So I guess, like, I, I'm the closest thing to, like, not knowing what salmon is, you know? Cause I yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you, you have picked this up as a standalone yeah. without having read previous issues of Sandman. And, and so, like, to me, I... I like understood what was going on, but I but like connections to Sandman to me, from how you guys have been describing it, sounds a lot more like there would have been more highlight that I would have gotten mm-hmm. out of more of like I didn't understand what was going on, and if I had read that, I would it would have made sense to me, you know? Yeah, it, it was more of like uh, periphery information. Okay. Yeah, I kind of get that. Like, yeah. And yeah. That, I guess... Oh, yeah, go ahead. even 
reading it, I mean, as someone who's read, I mean, as much as <laughs> what Cody assigned previously of Sandman, um, <laughs> I still, I think I said it previously, I went into it and there's a lot of times where I went, I feel like there's more to this than I'm being told. Or, like, mm. I am missing information from some previous thing or some other side spinoff. Like, the Ermite. Mm. I feel like there's a lot more there that I should know than I do. Who I mean, is I this tried dude? to look him up. I think this might be his only appearance. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So there might not be anything more. Wow. Is that a sign that, like, Neil Gaiman's great at writing something that could get a spinoff? Or is that a sign <laughs> that there's just not <laughs> enough being explained? <laughs> I, I mean, so, like, about, I will say, like, I didn't get that sense. And so, for me, I didn't question, like, I, I never asked myself, well, no, maybe there's more I'm missing here. I hmm. kept feeling like characters, I'm like, I feel like these characters probably have appearances elsewhere, like, uh, the more, like, Mad Hattie, like, obviously she <clears throat> does have other appearances. Mm -hmm. But, like, yeah, I, I do feel like there's a lot of backstory or something going on mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. not being let in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, um, kind of tying into that a little bit, and also kind of tying into, you know, somewhat strangely to part of what I liked, you know, which was like the whole, or, you know, the whole destiny kind of thing is like, you know, basically like, and this is something that Dream says, and I think Death even references Dream saying this and this, where it's like, you know, basically some things are like just faded, you know? Um, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I'm like, this is like a pretty like interconnected web of like very specific characters that things keep happening to. And like basically the the, the beginning domino is supposedly uh, Dream, you know, being captured and then like, you know, him having to go and grab all of his his items back in preludes and nocturnes. But I'm like, I don't know. It seems like this weird... Like, the domino did not go where you thought the domino was going to mm. go. Um, and it's weird that it only includes this very specific group of dominoes and not, like, a lot of dominoes. All the other dominoes know, are of... doing fine. These special yeah. dominoes, though. Yeah. It's kind of like the Star Wars, which is like the Skywalkers messing up the whole galaxy for, like, 30 years. <laughs> yeah. that That's the whole thing with Destiny that I'm like... I like it at times. I don't like it. I think it goes back to, cause are you are you talking about the person or no? Nah, just idea just the doing? the idea that this is a th through line in the story mm -hmm. that okay. a lot of these things are destiny are fated to happen. I I think it goes back to like writing advice I've heard where it's like you can have things coincidentally work out a few times. But most of the time, people want coincidences to be bad. They mm. want, oh, this this thing has come back and it's going to bite me in the butt. Versus mm -hmm. like, oh, by coincidence, we are saved through this miracle of dominoes lining up perfectly. <laughs> it's just not as satisfying. So like, oh, yeah. well, it's going to happen anyway. Or like this perfect, you know... The chandelier mm -hmm. landed on me perfectly to heal my legs. <laughs> uh, gotcha. I don't yeah. know why that was the example. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, in this case, it would be a refrigerator. <laughs> it's legs are um, fine. But I will say, yeah, I, I <laughs> agree with that writing advice. Like, the only thing is that sometimes it can become a little bit, like, you know, predictable, where it's all, like... All right, I know that this bad possible consequence has been set up, you know, and this bad consequence has been set up, and this one's been set up. That's why so you gotta all, subvert it. <laughs> so all three have have been will happen at the same time by coincidence. <laughs> but I guess that's also I guess that goes against what we're saying though, right? Because it fe the problem I'm having with a lot of these things in the story is it doesn't feel like they were set up. Mm -hmm. She just knows magic. And I was supposed to read 20 issues ago in some other series that she learned how to do a blood thing. Yeah. Mm. 
I, yeah. I don't understand yeah. how she knows that Hazel is in trouble. Like, I get that she's like that. Well, so Larry told her to listen to Hazel, but what what I thought happened was that she went to look into a drawer and something was missing, and she was like, "That the only reason this could be missing." What was is the because thing? Hazel, I don't, no, I don't know. No, 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 no. Because she, she, what you're thinking of is she grabbed the gun from the safe. That's all that she grabbed. She yeah. grabbed a gun, a knife, and a bowl. Yeah, and that, that very well. We don't do. get to use the gun. <laughs> no. It's no, it's just to concentrate gun. on. Mm hmm. <laughs> now think so, really hard about death, you guys, and we can do this. So I, I will say, um, I thought both stories were meh, and I did enjoy uh, High Cost of Living more than Time of Your Life. And, but I'd say the issue that I have with both of those is that they felt like there are no stakes. Yeah. And, and so, like, to what you're saying, Shuinta, about you feeling like there wasn't, um, what was the word you used? Set like, up. Mundane. Oh, mundane. Yeah, yeah everything is mundane. made to be mundane yeah. in some ways. And to me, I I would say it's more like, as I as I as I'm saying, like there are no stakes. And so to me, like when they get trapped into the, in the basement, I'm like, <laughs> that uh, there, there's well, no sense of dread there. Well, it's like, it could become a bad thing, right? Like that's what they keep saying, but it doesn't matter anyway because Hetty's gonna get them out of it. Because she mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. decided to have tea that day. And also the tea has told her about this. <laughs> There's not mm -hmm. them being, not them trying to like call somebody, like right. or get out through a window. Nah, Hetty's just mm -hmm. going to let him out and then the story is going to continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, um. No consequence. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and this. Same kind of thing for Sexton. It's just like, I just didn't find his character appealing. And mainly because I thought he just went along with it and he wasn't an active character. Yeah, he, he was purely POV and zero mm -hmm. proactive in the story. Yeah. He was just there to witness the, the weirdness, but also it's a mundane weirdness. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, like, yeah, Sexton doesn't even like see any magic. He just like sees some dude get punched and die. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. True. And then sees Dee Dee die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't have to pay for anything, but that could just be. <laughs> it's really uh, annoying she to, him. <laughs> she has to pay for one bad fake silver onk, mm -hmm. and that's it. <laughs> well, well, actually, to be fair, she and always she says she always has to pay. Everyone pays. I mean, so that's, so that's it's Destiny again, right? That she had the exact <laughs> amount of money she needed for the one thing in, during that life that she would need to buy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, yeah. does she just wake up with like a well when she is when she's doing her once in a hundred years? Does she just like wake up with the exact amount of money she needs, and she just have to figure out what to spend it on? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, I think so. I think she's gonna wake up with five thousand dollars this one time and be like, man. I don't know what do I'm going to have to buy. Time share? Do, I, <laughs> mm -hmm. do I put a down payment on a house? What do I do? She just does whatever she wants to do. That's the whole point. <laughs> so, question. Um, in Time of Your Life, mm -hmm. when she's talking to Hazel, Hazel's like, well, you already, get, you already know what I'm going to say or think, so why do I, like, why should I talk about it? And she's like, no, I don't know what you think. And Hazel's like, oh, you promise? And he's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, maybe she doesn't know? Well, she, we weren't discussing whether she knows what everybody thinks at all times, right? No. Well, but I, I would, what I'm saying is that, like, that would be a similar thing, I think. In the sense of, like, she doesn't know what's going to happen to her. Mm. Just as she doesn't know who the heart behind this person. I don't you know think I mean? she knows the future. That's for no. sure. Yeah, she definitely doesn't know the future. I think um, she. I think the reason why she like witnesses nearly everything, right? But that doesn't mean she knows what people are thinking. Mm -hmm. 
at that time. She just sees what they do, the actions that happen. Mm. That's how I feel about it, at least. Mm-hmm. So, but does that counteract what you're saying of like, oh, it just happens. Like she's going to wake up one day and she's going to have the exact same amount of money that she needs. You know what I mean? I just don't think she gets to decide in any of this, most of the part. Yeah. I mean, hmm. it does seem like she gets to decide whether she's going to take the kid or somebody else. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for the most, she doesn't get to decide how they die. She mm-hmm. doesn't. Yeah. So it's more like, and you know, the the shoes have already been made. She just steps in them, and like that's how. I don't. I don't yeah, know I think so. Analogy. I think so. Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, she says at the one part, the universe is comforting me by making these things, and so I think mm. the universe gotcha. is making this little, like you're saying, shoes for her to step into. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think yeah. So that's that's pretty much how it works. Yeah, it's kind of like something while you were talking about it, I kind of realized too was that like, you know, the difference between how she sees her job and how Dream sees his job, which again, uh, you, you know, you wouldn't know. And, mm-hmm. you know, this like only context for like, you know, the first uh, volume of Sandman. But like basically Dream is very rigid, you know, Mm -hmm. he is like, this is the way that my job is done. And like, this is like, you know, he's, he's all about like duty to his job and his function, Mm -hmm. you know, but like death obviously has like a little bit more looseness, you know, she understands that like, you know, this job needs to be done. It needs to be done right. But it's also like, well, I don't make deals. But also, eh, I guess I could make a deal now mm. because, like, at the at the end of the day, everybody dies anyway. Mm. So mm. why not just trade a life, you know? <laughs> it's not, and it's totally, like, you know, it's not, like, because this is a baby, you know, and so, like, it has, like, more life to live, potentially. Like, you know, she ostensibly, like, you know, takes babies every single day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um so, but it's just like, eh, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, um, she does say that she cares. She cares a little too much about Hazel, Foxglove, and Alvy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, and I assume that that was just because she met them while she was Dee Dee. I guess she maybe she didn't meet the Foxglove. Yeah, no, Foxglove was like at. I guess didn't meet their pump them personally, yeah. but like saw them for yeah. sure. Yeah, I that was that was still kind of confusing. Whereas like, does like yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's still a little bit of like I'm not Dee Dee, you know, but I have the thoughts and experiences of Dee Dee. So mm-hmm. I don't know, but I didn't know what to think of that. That like you know, the like she was too t- hazel, you know. Uh, Death was all like, no, we haven't met before. I'm not that person mm-hmm. that you thought I was. Because it's like, you kind of are, though. Yeah. <laughs> are you just lying? Mm-hmm. You don't have a reason to lie. Mm-hmm. There was something that Death also said that I thought was interesting. And I, I'm blanking on when she, how, when she said it, but she was like, because I was able to affect a life without taking it, or like, I was able to touch a life without taking it. I think it was the words that she said. Mm. And that was that she said that in reference to something, and I was just like, "Oh, so you're clearly referencing you being Didi, like, huh? Okay, I don't, I don't quite. I thought when you said it, I would know exactly what you're talking about, but mm. I'm like, I don't remember that. But I remember you does... her saying that, but I don't remember in reference mm. to what though. Yeah, huh. and same. I don't remember what I'm referencing. Either. <laughs> But that sounds kind of cool. <laughs> like, it was it was definitely something. That was a line that was in the book. Okay, I'm, I'm the only one that absolutely on doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, so like uh, with time in your life, like I have the same complaint that she went to had, where it's just like exposition. Except I was more like, is this like telling and not showing? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the Shuenta said that too. That's you know, exposition. Like, 
right? Yeah. Sure. It, it, well, <laughs> ex, exposition plus not showing, you know, yeah, sure. not even flashing back, but just literally, like, there's multiple mm -hmm. panels of just Hazel's profile talking. Yeah. With white background, even. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> And and so and I will say like of of the time of your life, I think the most compelling part was um the stuff with Alvi, especially mm. with him falling off the balcony. Mm -hmm. Like and I realized that I, I I think it connects to my complaint with these both two issues overall is that there was no stakes. That was probably that scene was probably the most like stakes out of all of it. Yeah, it was it was super like slowed down, you know, mm -hmm. like he's falling, he's falling, he's yeah. falling, crash, and it's like even red, like a red splat, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, like, but except for he's fine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I and I guess I'll say too. I meant to say this earlier that like yeah, I pretty much agree that this was like pretty middle quality. It was definitely overhyped for me. Mm. Um, but I mean, I don't think that the overhype really added to its detriment you know it was because it, some things it's all like oh this was overhyped and thus i didn't like it as much but it was like no i'm pretty sure i'm seeing the flaws of this like pretty clearly mm -hmm. and but like but it's just strange that it was so hyped you know that people liked it so much i'm like you yeah. know wh whenever that happens i'm kind of like did i miss something did and <laughs> Like, yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I read the same thing, but I'm not having the same reaction as you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Did I miss some important stakes? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, you know, we're back to Spawn now. True. True. <laughs> I, but... Yeah. You know? Okay, but Spawn was, like, really not great. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like, we're kind of middling. <laughs> even if you so, told so you're me saying Spawn... subjectively it's not great. <laughs> I mean, if you told me Spawn was not great and I read Spawn, I would have been like, that was not great. <laughs> but if you told me, like, this book was not great and I read it, I'd be mm. like, no, it's fine. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, okay. Yeah, I wish uh, I wish it was worse so I could hate it more, but it's just like, <laughs> it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's meh. Yeah. I, I liked the high cost of living, but only because the characters and, like, are a little bit fun. Mm -hmm. I would say. Also yeah, I think that that is something that I'll say, too, is the, just that, like, I felt like the high cost of living was, like, you know, definitely, like, a solid idea that, like, you know, they put together and, like, but then it felt like maybe time of your life was like, okay, we need more Sandman spinoff mm -hmm. content and, mm -hmm. and high cost of living sold well. Yeah, just follow know. Fox Club. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which I was kind of like, oh, okay, these are two characters that... I did not expect to see again. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I like must have misread the concert or the gig uh, scene yeah. where they first showed up, Foxlove and like Hazel, because I thought they were sisters. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so I was like, this is a little weird. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess you just want to live with your sister and her new kid. I mean, I'm sure like, that happens. Yeah, uh, yeah but... but I was like, it's cool that they're both lesbians, huh? What a coincidence! <laughs> runs in the family. <laughs> oh, that actually makes it a lot funnier. Yeah, because <laughs> I was like, eventually you figure out that they they're into each other. And then it's like they're both lesbians. Oh no! <laughs> no, it just runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, I think that's all we have. So this has been the comic panel. I'm Cody. I'm Taylon. I'm Jacob. And I'm Shawinta. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening. You can catch our show as it airs on Mondays from 5 to 7 p.m. on KSUA 91.5 FM, The People's Radio, in Fairbanks, Alaska. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Comic Panel. It's comic time. You can find The Comic Panel anywhere you listen to podcasts. Find us on Facebook at It's Comic Time, Instagram at the underscore comic underscore panel, and Twitter at the comic panel one. There, you will get updates on when we air on KSUA and when an episode is uploaded to YouTube and to the podcast. Have a great rest of your day.